Bernie Caulfield, executive producer. Steve Kulbach, visual effects producer. Joe Bauer, visual effects supervisor. In the Battle of Marine, there were 12 shots with Amelia on the back of the dragon blasting the shit out of things. And in this episode, there were well over 100. Obviously, David and Dan didn't follow my instructions that less is more. <laughs> Apparently, more is more. <laughs> more is more. More is better. And this is an awesome little bit of visual business. The fires bring so much hope and enthusiasm, an exciting moment, and then they all get snuffed out like little lives. Really clever gag. It was a metaphor for all of our hope and expectations as we got into shop production on this. <laughs> We joke about it because it all seemed rather daunting that 1,327 shots that go into this episode three is larger than the work we did in season two and almost as big as season the work we did six. in season three. And so we had just in one episode multiples of what we had previously done in all of the episodes. So these exteriors are a combination of exteriors and interior stage. And for lunch we had um, <laughs> mashed potatoes and... I remember those mashed potatoes. <laughs> we used them to dress in the snow in areas <laughs> where the, the hooves were piercing through to the ground below. So that was one of Mel, Melisandre's mic drop moments. Eric was a very reliable general for this because you really have to stick to your guns. There's so many agendas that have to be achieved in a very limited amount of time. And for our part, we planned the heck out of it. And thank goodness, this wonderful production sticks to the plan. Yeah, sometimes, and if not, then Eric has to think on his feet and decide <laughs> what you guys can live with or not, which is always amazing to just see that decision-making that is right in the moment. Well, it's a great collaboration. Yeah. It starts out with an insane wish list on the part of Dan and David, and we put together a, a previs that shows everything that's desired and then a tech viz and a playbook on how to execute it and then when you get to the ground sometimes things change when you're working with hundreds and hundreds of extras and you know wide fields of view sometimes you need to call an audible the bridge that pulled up was a construction by Sam Conway and his team over the trench that will ultimately light another in a long line of really extraordinary Conway contraptions. Yeah, and these things take months of planning. You go out and you look at the space rod and then you dig the trench, is it deep enough? And Miguel has to come out and bless it. And then all the wood had to look as if these guys had chopped it and that it didn't look machine made and then Sam had to lay all his troughs in and I mean the trench was and nobody wanted to hear the word trench by the end of this <laughs> sequence well just the mechanism for lighting it the water troughs I mean it really takes somebody who knows what they're doing to make those decisions there were one of these trebuchets built I think one Tommy Dunn and his Tommy Dunn. band of renown and then we added a few more. The damage to the ravenry is all CG and the way the dragon is moving, so we researched medieval building techniques and so that when the thing falls apart, you know, we know it, I don't know that anyone else would, but the debris and the way that it collapses is consistent with the way it would have been built. I don't think people maybe know that, but if it wasn't done that way, your brain would go, oh, that doesn't seem right. Well, so that's it. That's it's, exactly and I think it. that's what so much of our, the detail that happens in the background that 
people go, oh, nobody's going to notice that, but you do. Yeah, if it felt too flimsy, if it felt too light, if it didn't have enough resistance, yeah. I mean, it doesn't take much to puncture the illusion. All other departments are working so hard to uphold the illusion. You really don't want to be the one who ruins it. So we work like dogs to make sure that we hold up our part. We had a perfect example of that where the dragon is blasting the stone castle, blasting it apart, and the simulation that we saw from the vendor was wood splintering. And it looked cool, but it didn't look authentic, and we swapped it out to be stone breaking apart because it just wouldn't have had wood in the places where it did. The visual effects department in post-production, our standard week was six days, and then we would drift to seven as we needed to. You start feeling like a coal miner after a while, you know, and you go into your dark room, turn on your monitors, and hope that you've got some kind of skin color at the end of the process. We'd work on what Frank Zappa used to call his studio tan. Yeah. It's amazing the trajectory of Theon's arc as he's moved through his character over the seasons. And we had a trajectory of our own because I don't think any one of us would have been equipped to take on this episode when we first started so many years ago. It was a building and a learning and a growing and a stretching and a tearing and a breaking <laughs> and then yeah. well, you know, we're very healing lucky. and... <laughs> Yeah, and it was very important for HBO to not delay it anymore, which put so much pressure on you guys. It was hard enough for the fans to wait as long as they did, and if they knew what you had to go through to make that happen, it was pretty... I mean, that was a lot of pressure, and there was no going back, really, so everything had to, had to work, and everybody had to put their all into it. Well, and that was for the fans, it really was. Well, it really was worth it, I mean... There's not a minute that I regret of, of my effort, and I'm sure Steve feels the same way. If the things we work on in the future can be this worthwhile, that would be, we would be very lucky people. Well, like everything else, it all starts with the script, and everything we do is in the service of telling the story. And we were all blessed with two writers and showrunners who created extraordinary work and everything we've done has been to just try and live up to the words on those pages. And we're fortunate then, as Bernie said, it, the demands for the visual effects team grew. We really couldn't have, have asked for a better rollout as far as what we needed to figure out how to do. You know, I mean, look at that. So everything had to had to work, and everybody had to put their all into it. Well. And that was for the fans. It really was. And for lunch, we had um, mashed <laughs> potatoes and 